Sloan, now it's time for another episode of Why Do You Cooks? And this time, we've got Western Doty. Western Doty, famous bartender, the cellar dweller, uh, and more importantly, great photographer. And we had an amazing meal cooked by this guy. I fix drinks, and of course, well, <laughs> surprising to us, Western brought, I don't know why I didn't know this, but he just brought a shit ton of great alcohol for us to <laughs> imbibe. He brought this it was amazing rum. Easy. Was it, <laughs> what was it, El Pedro or El Paso? Don Pedro. Or Don Pedro. Don something. Amazing yeah. rum. And I don't like rums, so it's too sweet, but this was like a liqueur, but not sweet. It was so smooth and so rich, the flavor complex um yeah and i made uh thick kansas city strip steaks i seared them i coated them i, I rubbed them down with oil and i i rubbed them in uh salt and spices and herbs and then i hot flame hot uh big uh iron cast iron uh skillet pan i seared them all medium rare in the middle with a mushroom uh alfredo orzo it was really good. good. Yes. And what was the other? The vegetable. We had a vegetable. Because no one remembers the vegetable. But it was good. <laughs> it was good. It was all good. <clears throat> we had a salad and um, I, I paired, I you know, um, heavy, heavy uh, red wines with the steak. Uh, Cabernets. Got some special Cabernets. But we ended up drinking what <laughs> Western brought. Because he brought some amazing wines too. Yeah. Uh, Sloan and I had uh, uh, white Russians because we just figured Western's the dude. Right. But we ended up drinking you know, rum and everything else too. It was amazing. It was, it was a great, great night. Um, and Western really opened up. He went deep. Um, and it was quite impressive actually. He's a cool dude. All right, well, let's get to the show. All right. Western, welcome. Thank you. To Why Do You Cooks? Hey, drunk and Uncle Cooks. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Appreciate it. <laughs> but what we're here because you have something you, that you love maybe more than life itself. And what is that? Um, besides my SO, photography. Photography. Yes. Yeah. I've been doing it since I was nine years old. And my dad taught me how. Uh, gave me my first camera. Taught me how to use darkroom. And... And uh, yeah, just, you know, I put it aside uh, for, as just a hobby for about 20 years while I did the corporate whore thing. And, and then, so wanted to get that retirement in and, and just walk away and uh, go back to doing what I love. And that's what I did. What, what, what do you get out of it? What, what's, the, what's the sort of main charge for you when you're taking photos? And as I explore, the project or the idea or the thought, you know, it kind of starts, I start realizing that it's a part of my past or my psyche or whatever. And uh, so it kind of sends me down this, this trail of, you know, that this is a part of something that was, had happened to me or, or you know, somewhere along it is the symbolism involved and things like that. So. <laughs> It, each each um, each project is really based on that, and then I have just general photos where I'll go out and I'll say, "Hey, yeah, this place is cool. I want to do a set of photos of this," and and uh, you know, and I think that would be cool. So, you so you know. must have your own company. Uh, you know, I did have my own company, and I I it's Half Tone Photography. I guess it still is my company. I just I just freelance, you know, as my own my own you know entity and. And, um, and just proceed that way. Because lot, since my gallery, a lot of my stuff is gallery submission, you know, and I submit to galleries and things like that for shows and, and, and you know, it doesn't matter, you know, just that's more so what I do than anything. And if you want to read more about it, you can go to westerndoty.com. There it is. And, yeah. uh, yeah. and there's, okay. and you can check out there. I have uh, different projects in my portfolio and, and some stuff soon to, soon to come. So are these, are these projects theme based? Like you just said something about fears, is that? Well, usually, yeah. I mean, they usually end up being, um, they usually end up being the case. It's, uh, it's, it's part of the process and the exploration of it. You know, why I'm thinking about this or actually I should say obsessing about it. Cause that's what happens. I become obsessive. I can't stop thinking about it. I can't stop 
trying to figure out why I'm thinking about it so much. And I know if I don't figure it out and shoot it, it's going to just keep bothering me and bother me. So that's actually the push for me to, to do these things. Yeah. And uh, because I get highly aggravated. I mean, it really messes with me. <laughs> I know, and, and I don't know if that makes any sense, but uh, you know, like with the motel Route 66, Room 116 shoot, you know, the, the answer came to me probably the second shoot of why I'm here or why I'm doing this, you know. And, and the answer was that I remember, I had a, I remember a memory that I'd totally forgotten about that my mother and father had got into a pretty vicious uh, argument at home. And she took me and the sister uh, to Desert Hills. And uh, we stayed there, you know, for whatever reason. And I was, you know, and so I remember so, that it uh, came back to me, you know, and I verified it with my sister and my mother and, you know, and that's, so it's like, because sometimes I don't even trust myself. You know, it's like, did I really go to Desert Hills? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, no, I know I did because it's there. I saying is that your photography is a kind of um, psycho documentary like you're in some ways you're you're exploring in what's inside as well as like the sort of external world it, photo. it is it's part of um, you know how I came up and, and where I grew up which was pretty rough and uh, you know I was pretty angry and I was pretty you know uh, volatile um, as a young man and I found this therapist in Boulder, Colorado that was the greatest therapist in the world because he didn't say a word. Right. He just like, sit there and stared at me, you know. So, and then after that, you know, I kind of started opening myself up and, and reading certain authors, you know, like James Baldwin, who's a big influence of mine, and realizing that I'm not alone in this world and, and struggles and everyone struggles and everyone's struggle is different, and, you know, and that type of thing. So, as that happened, as I was, you know, in the corporate world, uh, which made it so much easier for me to walk away from that, um, I, uh, you know, I just pretty much use um, my work or my, my projects, they, they stem from my experiences. Well, they're, they're, it's or funny how many layer, layers layers are involved, mm -hmm. you know, in, in people's lives, and, and uh, so I'm just constantly looking at these, peeling back these layers, and I know that's kind of cliche and blah blah blah, but it is true. I mean, it's just, you know, and like an onion, yeah, you have layers <laughs> like an onion. Sorry, I'm quoting Shrek. Speaking of onions, yeah. I know it's time. I, 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 think, I think it's time to cook. Yeah, and we can talk about me living in the trailer park for a year. Next I time. want to hear more about that. <laughs> 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 okay. I'm gonna need a lot of bread. Let's go toast. So, first of all, the chef, Sloan Davis. Yes, yeah, Sloan! 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 Sloan!
and you know, to our guest, Western. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm, oh. Mm -hmm. Nobody. Thank you, Brian. Western and bring Western. and coming in with four bottles of booze like a rock star. Seriously, what best guest ever. Oh, Jesus, sorry what guys. Oh, <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of what we want. I mean, like, this is a scam. It's a competition. Yeah. This is a competition mm -hmm. show. Okay. It's gonna be best, the best guest. guest. <laughs> <laughs> they win. Uh, what? Right. Yeah, next guess, you better know. come with five bottles. Let's see what the steak tastes like. <laughs> Let's get into this bad boy. Yeah. Hey, I'm the curious. The steak is so good. It's really hard to see um, the rates, and you see this cycle of poverty that that just, it really is interesting that nobody really gets. Like, hey man, it, you know, it's expensive to be poor. That's right. right. And if you get busted or you have to go to court or whatever, I mean, there are these things that pile on mm -hmm. yeah, just to beat you down, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's what you witness at these type of places. So that being said, you know, people coming and, and uh, Love you. Uh, participating in this photo shoot that I asked and then trying to get locals to come in and trust me. And, yeah. Uh, wow. Um, you know, it was it was it was very interesting. It was interesting meeting the people that were just. And what year was that? Two thousand thirteen, I believe. Okay. Maybe twelve. So this begs the question, though, right? All this information is why haven't you shot your drunken uncle? <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus. Well, am well I first asking, of all, am, am you probably like, have not come to him in the dream. Like a calendar. Yeah. No, you can't. Like, oh hey, first off, <laughs> like, like a fireman calendar, but you don't know. First version. off, you two can come by the studio anytime and we can do the drunk and uncle shoot. I mean, we need to be like in our swimming, swimming mm -hmm. trunks. And, no. And then, no, Laura, no. <laughs> Laura loves us, but not that much. Ooh. Reality comes home. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yellow speed. Ropes. Hey, you know how they're doing like these models now who are like, Authentic sizes. Yeah, dad bods. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and these right. are these are real human being bodies. So that's true. Well, that's oh, okay. we got her on the we got her on the PC side. I think that's a very important element to any art form is, is the is the narrative, right? The story. Because people really do want to tell their stories. You know, if they get a chance to. Well, um, a lot of my youth and how I was raised, you know, my dad was like this, um, you know, he owned Western Sign Company downtown, Rainer Frederick bought it. And it's named after me. A lot of people don't realize that that's actually my dad's Amazing. Yeah. shop. Okay. Yeah, yeah, kind yeah. Of, it's a big deal in the sign company world and the sign world and, you know, and, and here yeah, in Tulsa, yeah. you know, and, and a great artist himself, but a hippie, you know, long white beard, like ZZ Top, tattoos, <laughs> you know, a lot of people don't know that that's my father, you know, and very absent. If you look at my work, a lot of it is female themed, and a lot of it has to do with my mother, my mom issues, uh, who I get all of my best qualities from, you know, and uh, the women in the neighborhood who I was fortunate for them to be there to raise me, also, and have an influence on me. I mean, that neighborhood kind of right. The neighborhood raised me, raising you, yeah. right. My first job here in North Tulsa, there used to be a quick trip down on North Main that was pretty shady, and and it's no longer there. Uh, you know, my first job at I think ten years old was I would get a dollar from the prostitutes on Cheyenne to run get them cigarettes and a, something to drink so they wouldn't lose their place. You know, and that was my first job. You know, and doing things like that. But at the same time, they were also parenting me and keeping me out of trouble, which is weird because it's hard for people to believe or understand or relate that just because they're prostitutes doesn't mean they're not good parents, you know, or they don't they're have a concern, yeah, yeah. or they, they don't, don't have a concern yeah, for a child. Something. Yeah, but they're good people. You know, they're good people. They they're humans. Yeah, they're, they're human beings. The thing that used to anger me were the clients I would pull up and the things they would say to her, to them. You know, and, and it's just like this dehumanizing, mm -hmm. you know, really sick thing that I was exposed to at a very young age that I couldn't process through. 
So those type of things have a big impact and influence on how I shoot and how I approach. I don't want their, I don't want them disrespected, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And 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 I don't know if that makes sense. No, it, it, it totally makes, makes sense. sense. It, feels yeah. like, it feels like you've thought this out. You have well, thought this is, out. And it's part of it's part of my coming to peace with myself. You know, it's like you know, I'm grateful that they were there. Um, I mean, do you prefer that kind of series? Like, do you like to work in a series? Uh, is that your sort of main? Well, form? And, I, and, well and to your, you know, a lot of people will. If you ever look at my work, and it's like uh, the way I shoot it is. I don't do a lot of tight shots. I don't do a lot of, you know, bulky blurred backgrounds where I'm, I'm specifically focused on something. I try and do the whole scene where it tells a story. Right. And, and you know, a lot of that is, you know, the first time I found something that triggered me to want to be a photographer is, yes, my dad turned me on to it, but also my dad had Larry Clark's Tulsa book, mm -hmm. which I found at an early age. And, Mm. Opened it up and I'm like, I didn't really, I, I knew, but I didn't know, you know. And, and right then and there, I mean, it's like, I'm going to be a photographer. And my my biggest influencers are not necessarily <coughs> photographers, even though Larry Clark got, got me into photography. You know, I'm more of a Taylor, um, a G Oscar fan here in Tulsa, you know, or I'm more of a, a Kira Kurosawa fan, or I'm more. My biggest influence is actually Andrei Tarkovsky, who is a Russian director. Right, of course. And he, the way he films is like a photographer. That's right. You know, right. He, he, each frame tells a story and is continuous shot. Right. He loves stills. Like that. Right. Wow. And that's how I try and tell the story, too. It's the, that's where that, that comes through. I'm always looking at just the frame trying to tell its own story. <laughs> the set is my... The set is me. So I don't know if that makes sense. The set is me. You see that continuous set. That's me. That's, that's your internal right. landscape. That's me. That's where it's coming from. And what's coming into my realm or whatever are, 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 are things that I may have witnessed or things that I, I, I fantasize about or things that I fear or things that I whatever. No. And uh, so the set is me, actually. You know what? It's it's it, and this is really hard for me to talk about because I don't want to sound like I'm like making some judgment call or anything. But you know what? I'll value driving a 1997 car and being able to do what I do now. Right. Or that, I'll value right. living in a neighborhood that may not be the greatest neighborhood. How, although I happen to think it's the greatest neighborhood. Right. <laughs> uh, Right. I'll value shopping. Everything that I'm wearing comes from Goodwill. Hell yeah. So I can be and that. do what I want to do. So the next thing that I mean, the thing I'm working on right now is I had a studio project I've been working on. It's kind of like this. Interior that was a reminder of my den, the living room where I grew up. I don't want to just. And um, so again, the set is me, right? It's a living room or it can be a bedroom. And um, uh, the things that play out about that are just experiences or stories or whatever. Or, yearnings or interpretations of what, you know, what happened or what's going on. And, but then I realized, I'm sure are a lot of lonely, desperate people out here. <laughs> Including me. <laughs> right. We sure are relying on each other in really fucked up ways. <laughs> and, Hello, motivation. Right. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I want. I want to see. It. I want to see this existential crisis that we're all, right. all experiencing. These okay. Which ones are these? Uh, motel ones? or any of them? Actually, oh, any of them. So. I mean, I, that's what. That's what I'm getting to. Really. I mean, I already love your photography on the surface. Right. What we see. But but hearing you talk about it, and I love hearing you talk about it. Right. Exactly. But now knowing there's this sort of you know psychodrama going on. You know, underneath it, I mean, to me, that just gives it depth. 
right. well, one, <laughs> one thing I wanted to say about Lindsay, the other thing that, you know, because I'm so ADD, you know, just plowing through and, 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 and I'm able to go to her and I'm able to explain to her what I'm feeling and what the narrative's about and everything like that. And she's the very first person to ever be able to, to gather all this madness and put it in a, in a, uh, in a structured, you know, explanation of, of what I'm talking about. So is she helping you? Like, oh yeah, she's, she, she's like, she's my editor savior. Oh, she's one of the best writers I've ever, that. yeah, she's one of the best writers. And uh, so I come to her and I explain to her, you know, what's going on and this is why. And, uh, and she's able to take that and, and just nail it every time. And uh, so I'm so grateful for that because, and that's that connection we have. So anyway. So cool. Wow, that is very cool. I had no idea. All right, so tell That's us what's going on now. What, what's your current thing and what's your next thing? Well, I'm still working on the studio thing, and I got uh, sidetracked while I was working on the studio thing uh, with the Fear uh, Sheet Project thing, which is on display at Orth Gallery. Um, uh, but I'm still working on the studio thing where the, the set is basically the paneling of the 70s and, and the bedroom scene or the living room scene. And uh, I'm kind of going through that still. I need to finish that up. Um, and then after that, um, I've got a couple of things that I want to do, which I'm going to try and raise funding for, which is uh, shooting the architectural um, juke joints and places where music was played along uh, the Mississippi River from Memphis all the way down to Louisiana. Right. We, everyone focuses on the artists but no one really focuses on the architecture and the place where they play. Yeah, and, and those are disappearing really fast. Yeah, they're, dis they're disappearing real fast. I'm going to carry your shit or something. No, you're not going to have a little bit of that. Right. We're going to go along. We'll do a documentary. And that's, a documentary. So hopefully I can get some funds to where I can make that happen and, and, and do that. And uh, that's, that's on, I, I have a big checklist of what I'm, want to do next and, oh, and that's very that sounds very familiar. familiar yeah because as you can tell from what i've heard i'm not planning on doing with anything what i've done to shoot i'll just keep bulldozing along and at some point i actually could stop right now and i could be busy for the next 10 years thanks for watching another episode of why do you cooks with western Doty. Come join us in one of these cooks if you have something to promote yourself. Uh, a, a business, art, nonprofit, whatever you want to promote, let us know. Yeah, we'll see you next time on Why Do You Cooks? Well, the one thing I, I do want to say about tonight is, is where I'm at in my life and who I am as a human being is all due to the people who raised me in North Tulsa. And... Uh, and expose me and help me understand and uh, my, my privilege, my struggles, and that everyone, you know, is in the same boat, regardless of, yeah, everyone's struggles different, but in, if you look at the big picture, we're all in the same boat. So, and I, and I appreciate that, you know, I'm, I'm very protective of my community that I grew up in.